Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tori and today I wanted to share a fun way that I use my card making supplies. I have these two little like hanging frames, if you will, um, and I don't put pictures in them. I usually play with any of the card making supplies that I have. Like this is one that I made, I believe in January. I have little card making dates with one of my friends and whatever I make when we have those, I usually end up just putting on display as like a little mini piece of art. So I have been doing this for several months now. I've got these two that I did last year, which are both uh, Spellbinder, I think all three of these actually are from the Spellbinder Club Kits. Um, and this one is a little bit bigger, so you can see kind of how that looks. And I just hang them up around my house just to add a little bit of a festive touch. But everything that I have made so far has been very seasonal. I had this one up for a while too, but I accidentally spilt or I guess tipped over some of the ink that I was using. So now there's a big orange <laughs> ink splotch on it. But I had this one hanging up for Christmas. So everything that I have done so far has been very seasonal. So I wanted to make at least one of these kind of little card designs or pieces of art, if you will, as a more general thing to hang up no matter what the season is. So I've got these two frames. This is the one that I usually fill and then I actually found this one in some of my storage. So I will have the ability to hang up two. I think I might leave this one in my living room and this one I put on a bookshelf. So I have not fully decided what exactly I'm gonna do yet. So I'm probably gonna go dig around and find some card making supplies that I have not yet used and then decide what I'm going to do. And then the next time you see me, I will start working on that card and we'll probably be doing a voiceover. But I did want to film this introduction to the video and kind of explain really like what I'm doing with this because I think I've mentioned previously that I don't have a lot of people to send or give cards to, but I love card making and this is a great way to participate in card making if you don't have anybody that you want to send cards to you can just make them and hang them up around your house all right so i'm gonna go figure out what we are working on today and when i come back that is what we will be doing it's a new day, my whole desk setup has changed, and I ultimately decided to use another stamp and die set from Spellbinders. This is the Lily Arch set, and I believe this was from February of 2024, so it might actually be available now on their website. I recently got a waffle flower grip mat, so I'm placing that inside my mini Misty because I wanted to test it out for stamping out this Lily Arch here. Um, I will say that I did really like how my paper didn't move at all. That was quite nice. I'm going to pull out my intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp, my pressure tool, and some 80 pound cardstock. This white cardstock is from the stamp market. I'm just gonna trim this down to be the normal um, or not the normal, but five and a half by four inches. And I'm going to use that to stamp my lily arch on. I wasn't sure when I was doing this stamping if I was going to keep this white background that will be cut off of the arch when I use the die. So I was trying to make sure that I centered that quite well. Ultimately, I don't end up actually using that piece, but it was good when I was still unsure to have just placed it in the middle. I'm going to kind of just prep my stamp here and then I'm going to ink it up with that intense black ink and go ahead and get that pressed down into my paper. I chose this intense black ink because it is alcohol marker friendly and I'm actually going to color this stamp set in with my alcohol markers. This is not something that I do very often 
And for the last couple of months that I've been doing these little art cards, I have been making them very, very bulky, like as bulky as I could possibly make them because I'm not sending them anywhere. I don't have to worry about them fitting into an envelope and I can really just add all of the layers and all of the dimension. So I've really been enjoying that. But I decided that for this art card, I was just going to take some time and do some kind of relaxing coloring, which I don't do often enough and I love coloring with alcohol markers. So I was really excited to use this specific stamp to start that coloring process. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out that die set that does coordinate with this stamp set. And I will pull out some mint tape from scrapbook.com and tape it down. I should have waited until I pulled this off of the grip mat because it did unstick my tape when I pulled it off, but it was an easy fix. So I just, I guess, didn't think about it too hard. Um, so I'm going to, you know, correct my die placement here and then take that over to my die cutting machine and get that cut out. I will be doing most of my die cutting off camera, at least anything that requires the use of my larger Spellbinders machine because it is huge and I already have enough problems with this particular table shaking if I am moving too much while crafting on it. So if I put my die cutting machine over here, it would be a shaky, shaky mess <laughs> and nobody wants that. So I'm now placing my die cut out image out to see how it looks back inside that border. And I will be using several Copic alcohol markers. I did place the color numbers of those on screen and I will also place those in the description box below if you're interested in checking them out. But um, I will be adding a couple more color variations in as the video progresses. And anytime I bring in a new color, I will place that on screen. In addition to these Copic markers that I'm gonna be using, I will also be using two of the Artist Loft alcohol markers from Michaels. I had pulled out a darker gray and a green that I will use a little bit later in the video. And originally, I was just planning to do all of the buds in a kind of two-toned gray look. But then I pulled out these blue markers and started kind of doing some flicking coloring of the lilies and I was obsessed with it. So I did the darker blue just towards the insides of the lily and then I used that lighter blue to pull it out a little bit more. And then I pulled my gray Copic marker and just colored it in the rest of the way. And I by no means am an expert at the blending of alcohol markers but I was quite pleased with myself once I finished this and I will do a couple like little close-ups here and there because I was just very proud of how everything was looking and so because I liked the way that this colorway looked so much together I'm also going to go back in and recolor all of those buds to match the lilies obviously because I want them all to be the same kind of blue li lily look I'm then going to pull out a couple of oranges here uh, from my Copic markers and I'm going to color in all of the stems on the inside. I'm a stamen I think is what it's called. Uh, I'm coloring all of those in orange. So the Copic marker set that I have is actually a set that I got from Amazon. I think it was the blender set or pastel set from Amazon. I'm not sure but I will link that down below if you are interested in it. I just bought a set of a couple of colors and then I got a gray one separately because I really wanted to try them. So I have a lot of the Ohuhu alcohol markers and a couple of the Artist Loft ones. And I wanted to give the Copic markers a try as well. And I really do like them a lot, but I, <laughs> you have to buy so many of them in order to be able to do the correct color variations and they're so expensive. So if I do invest in any more, it will be very slowly for sure. So I am continuing coloring on here and I will just kind of let you listen to a little bit of music while I get this finished up and then we will proceed with the making of my little art card.
So this green color is going to be the last little bit of color that I will be adding here to my main piece. Um, and then I will move on to getting some other items prepped for the actual card portion itself. Now, I did want to mention that a lot of the stuff that I did in this video, I was deciding as I was filming the video. The only thing that I had decided before I actually started this filming process was that I wanted to use this stamp and die set. Everything else happened as I was filming because I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do. So I did use that die two more times and cut out that lily frame or lily arch two more times and I'm going to stack these on top of each other just to give a little bit additional dimension to my actual lily arch frame. I also pulled out a kind of light aqua or light turquoise color that I thought worked really well with the blues that I used to color in these lilies. So that is going to be what I'm going to use as kind of my main background. I'm going to use that lily arch again and cut it out of that blue paper. That way I can have kind of a nested look and kind of just tuck my lily arch right into where that uh, blue paper is going to have that cut out. So since I only have kind of a partially cut out paper here. I'm just cutting this into two A5 size card panels. And then I'm going to try and decide if I wanna trim it down to the four by five and a quarter. And I wasn't sure, so what I did was go ahead and move on to finishing gluing my lily arches together. So I did set that underneath a stamping block just to kind of, or my magnets I think, just to kind of adhere those down together so they wouldn't move while that glue was drying. I will pull out a stamping block to set on top of the lily arch once I get this portion added. Um, and once that is tucked into my corner and drying completely, I will decide officially to cut down that panel so that it is going to be the four by five and a quarter inches uh, for my panel base, if you will. Since I'm not going to actually be utilizing this as a card per se, I do not put them on card bases or anything like that. I will usually stick to that same A5 size just because that's the size that I like to work in when I'm making cards. But when I do get everything finished up, I will either just leave it as is or sometimes I cut a little bit bigger of a panel to paste everything on. So this is how that will look. I'm going to use, like I said, that blue paper as kind of my background. And then I'm also going to pull out a little bit of white cardstock. I had to grab a new piece because I used up all of the other one. And then I'm going to cut this at the regular A5 side. So I've got a nice white border to go around that blue as well. While I'm messing around with this and getting everything kind of dry fit together, I would love to know down in the comments below, do you use your card making or scrapbooking supplies for things that aren't necessarily card making or scrapbooking? If you do, let me know down in the comments below what are some of the things that you use these items for. This I feel like is a very non-traditional way to use card making supplies, though I'm sure I'm not the only person that does this but I absolutely adore doing it. And when I introduced my friend that comes over for little card making parties with me to this, she actually does the exact same thing. Like she just takes them home, the little card that we'll make together, and she just hangs it up on her wall. Like she doesn't send cards to anybody, she just uses them for de decoration at her home. And I really love it. So if you've not tried this, uh, and you do end up trying it, I would love to know what your thoughts on this process were and how you felt about it. So I am getting all of these elements kind of adhered together. I glued down my blue piece of cardstock and then I'm also 
gluing down my lily arch. All of the cardstock that I'm using today is from the stamp market. Uh, the white is just in a pack of white and I have absolutely no idea what color this blue is. I had purchased like a sample pack and I think this was from the sample pack and I never made notes of what any of the colors were when I initially got it because I had only purchased it for myself. I didn't think I was going to be recording these videos, but alas, here we are. If I can figure out what the color is, I will note it in the comments or in the description box below, but I wouldn't hold my breath because I have no idea what color it is. The last thing that I'm going to work on for this art card, that's I guess what I've decided I'm going to call it, is the little sentiment. For these particular card types, I do like to choose sentiments that don't necessarily make it sound like it should be for somebody else. And I know there are a lot of card making supplies that have like just motivational phrases and sentiments and that's the stuff that I usually end up using. Or if it's like a seasonal thing that says like happy fall, happy holidays or something like that, I'll use those as well. So for this one, I chose the sentiment that says live life in full bloom. And I'm just using some of those scrap pieces of the white cardstock that I was using to get that stamped out. And I'm using my mini Misty tool to go ahead and make sure that I've got a nice clear impression of that sentiment before I use my mini die cutting machine to die cut that out. Since this is such a small sentiment, I'm going to pull out my Sizzix mini die cut machine and I'm going to just cut that out right on the table. I will also decide that I want to add a little bit of dimension to this one as well. So I'm going to cut out the first one and then put my die cutting machine back, but I will pull it right back out almost immediately when I realize that I don't want this sentiment to be as thin as it is. And that's mostly because I will be overlapping it between the flowers and I had added some dimension to those flowers so I didn't want too much empty space behind such a thin sentiment strip. So I will add two more of the same like die cut elements out for the sentiment strip and just glue all three of those together. And once I have all three of those glued together, I will then get it adhered down to my card. Anytime I am using actual liquid glue throughout this video, I am just using my Barely Arts liquid glue. I get this on Amazon and I love it. It's definitely been my favorite glue that I've used. To be honest, I haven't tried any other ones, but I do really, really like this one. So I haven't had a need to try anything else. Um, so anytime I'm using glue, I am using that one. And then to get this particular sentiment glued down to my actual page, I did pull out an eighth inch score tape. And I will use that just to add a little bit of adhesive to the back where I know my sentiment will be touching the flowers um, to keep that where it should be. Be. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just grabbing that score tape. This score tape is from scrapbook.com. I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just eighth inch score tape. Um, and I am using that to get that adhered down. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I didn't add any extra embellishments or anything else because I thought the coloring on this art card really stood out and I wanted to keep it that way. I wanted it to just kind of represent itself. I am pulling out my little T-square ruler from Simon Says Stamp so that I can get my sentiment lined up at a 
as you know straight as possible. I then remembered that I've got a magnetic board here, uh, which is what I usually use when I'm doing cards or art cards or anything like that. So I just stuck those down to either side of the top of my card um, so that I could keep the ruler in place. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuck right in my little frame that I shared at the beginning of the video. And that is how that's going to look. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you made it to the end of this video, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And if this is something that you'd be willing to try. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.